Introduced to the United States in 2000, they thrive in temperatures between 70 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. At a size of 1 16th of an inch, they draw farmers to fields with magnifying or, depending on the eye, reading glasses. Soybean aphids damage their host plant by feeding on the underside of leaves and reducing photosynthesis. In ideal conditions, a soybean aphid population can double in as little as two or three days. First found in Nebraska in 2002, soybean aphids can decrease yield by over 30 percent in this state, and the University of Minnesota has found aphids can cut production nearly in half. Now University of Nebraska researchers are working on a seed variety that may dramatically lessen the impact of the small yellow pest. Our discussion with Tom Hunt at the Haskell Ag Lab near Concord explains how. Well, we've been working with Dr. Tiffany Hang Moss down in Lincoln on soybean aphid resistance to soybean aphids. And this is a type of management tool that doesn't require insecticide use, um, is uh, built into the plant, so can provide a really good way for farmers to deal with soybean aphids. Is there something like this that exists outside of the Midwest, in other countries, anything like that? Um, resistance is something that is in a lot of different plants. People look at it and are using it across the country, but the type of resistance they're looking at and using primarily is antibiotic resistance, which is a single gene resistance that has a del del deleterious effect on the aphid. We've found a soybean variety that has tolerance to soybean aphids. In other words, the plant can tolerate more aphids and injury without the subsequent severe yield loss that we see with other varieties. Meaning what for the farmer? What does it allow him or her to do? Well, the farmer has more flexibility. One of the things about soybean aphids is they hit and, they, and the populations build fast. So farmers either catch it a little bit late, so they lose some yield, or they catch it just in time, but there's delays in treating it because of a backup of equipment or something like that. So this allows more flexibility. The farmer has more time before he gets severe damage, and even if he misses it, he's not going to get the 30, 40 percent damage that he would get with regular varieties. He may get up to almost, you know, maybe 10, 13 percent damage. We're just a stone's throw away from the Haskell Ag Lab here in Concord. You've grown this variety here on land around this, correct? Yes, it started out as a germplasm from Kansas. We got it from some of our collaborators in Kansas, and so in the last few years we built up seed stocks and so two years ago we had enough to do a regular large plot trial and we saw a severe insect infestation but we only had about a 13 percent yield loss where we would have expected up to a 35 percent yield loss so that indicated that yes indeed under field conditions it does have tolerance to soybean aphid injury. You mentioned Kansas explain to me how this kind of came about. Well, our collaborators in Kansas uh, were using actually this variety as a susceptible line for their resistance work. They were looking for antibiosis and they do a lot of their screening at the seedling stages. And this soybean line, you know, produced high numbers of aphids, so they used it to compare to other lines to see if they had uh, some antibiotic characteristics and had lower aphid numbers. Indeed it did. Well, as we looked at it, we saw, yes, it, it does hold a lot of aphids. Um, let's grow it a little longer and see if it can sustain that and yield, and, and it did. It uh, Actually, when we looked at it in reproductive stages, it showed tolerance and, and it showed that the yield loss was not as severe. So that's how we started to look at this aphid and, uh, or soybean line and, and uh, testing it with aphids both in the greenhouse and in the field. Is there any trade-off? Does it, you know, if you use this line, does it make the soybean more susceptible to anything else that you found? Uh, not that we've found. We will be looking at that further. Uh, Dr. Graff, our soybean breeder at UNL, is going to be looking at it in his breeding studies and trials. And so we're going to look at it. Hopefully we can put some uh, antibiotic genes into that line also and uh, uh, build a higher yielding soybean and, and hopefully suitable for Nebraska farmers. Why is it so hard to, to, to find something like this, to find a variety that, that doesn't necessarily have it? Because there isn't necessarily a line that has more resistance, is there, or that has this out there? Well, the problem with tolerance, uh, or I shouldn't say problem, but the thing with tolerance <laughs> is it's multigenic. A lot of genes are involved. With antibiotic resistance, it's usually a single gene, so breeders can really, really focus on that and use it in breeding studies. And, and, uh, and breeding programs. But with tolerance and multi-genes, it's harder to deal with that. But I mean, nowadays- what, Because there's, there's so many things you have to put your finger on, essentially? There's so many genes involved in the resistance so that when it's hard to identify the particular block of okay. genes or, or, or move them around. But now with certain molecular techniques and with the ability to look at off on regulation of various groups of genes, we can identify those uh, lines that have these genes. Um, we can look at the mechanisms of resistance and, and we can then use them in uh, breeding programs such as Dr. Graff is going to begin to do.